Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Conrad Rocks, Rocks of Revelation, being poured out to you. Amen. Good day, everyone. It's Conrad from Conrad Rocks again. Um, I'm finally almost settled in. We're doing our show from South Haven, Mississippi. I'm on the second floor of the Ephesians 6 compound. We just loaded our groceries upstairs. Don't have internet yet, so I'm having to do some back flips to get this show to you. But I'm trying to get back in the groove here, trying to find a pond or a cool place to pray. Well, I'm in the city now, so um, that might be a while. Anyway, one of the cool things about this move is I took a bath. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I used to love to take baths. And, and the reason I'm doing that is my muscles are so sore from the move. And there's nothing like getting a hot bath of water. And the interesting thing about this bath um, is I, I turned it on. It was really hot. Uh, it doesn't. The cold doesn't really work. It's just kind of cool, maybe. And so I was uh, letting the hot bath water kind of fill up. And it was a little bit too hot. And I started thinking, you know what? There's there's going to be a sermon in here somewhere. I mean, I could just I could just sense God is up to something with this hot water. And I was thinking about how I put my toe in the hot water. I was about ready to get in. I'm like, wow, that's too hot. I can't go in there. And I started thinking about how unsaved people are freaked out about the sold out people. Of course, I'm thinking about the Laodicean church, but. You know, to the unsaved, we need to understand that spiritual things are spiritually discerned. The carnal mind's in enmity with God. We all know that. We talk about that a lot. And the sold-out hot water people, they look like crazy, um, crazy madmen to the unsaved. And then also think about Moses. When God came down in Mount Sinai and he burned the top of the mountain... And uh, he was going to talk with the people, and the people just ran away. They were freaking out because it was too hot. Our God is a consuming fire. And they're like, Moses, dude, you just do the talking. You talk. God says to Moses, hey, you know what? Aaron's going to be like your prophet, and you're going to be like God to the people. Basically, he's just conveying the messages from the throne of heaven to the people because the people were too afraid to get close to God. There's this one scripture uh, where Eldad and Medad, I believe, they were prophesying without the without the camp. They weren't even supposed to be at this meeting with the spirit of prophecy over them anyway. And, and they're like, Moses, tell these people to stop prophesying. See, they don't understand. In, in, in Corinthians, Paul says that we must earnestly covet to prophesy. And Moses says, I would to God that all God's people would prophesy. But they're too afraid of the heat. They can't take the heat in that relationship. Now, more thoughts entered my mind as I was observing this bath. I'm thinking, wow, the water is too hot. So the common sense thing to do is to put some cold water in there. And like I said, the the cold on the tub doesn't seem to work like really cold, like cold water in a refrigerator. That's not the way it works. So I had to pour some lukewarm water. And one of the things that I was it's got to be it's got to be comfortable enough for the flesh to get in to the water, right? And we know that flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Heaven's too hot. Too hot to handle, right? So I was it was taking plenty of time and I was noticing that the lukewarm water had a source. It it's a spout. There is a source. And one of the things that this lukewarm water lukewarm water does as it attach is it's poured into the hot water, it doesn't go all the way to the other end of the tub. It spreads, much like an odor, when you have a pungent odor of a skunk or something. The closer you get to the source, the stronger that odor is. So this lukewarm water, which is trying to cool off the hot water, it has a source, and it spreads. 
Paul talks in Corinthians about how a little leaven leavens the whole lump, right? So let's think about that a little bit. And let's also think about how Paul found the source of fornication in the Corinthian church, a man bragging about having his father's wife. And because of this source that was going on in the church, it was spreading like leaven. People were talking about it, and it was pervading slowly throughout the church, like a dis, like a odor dissipating, like leaven and bread. It split, spreads from the source. So Paul knew that to solve this problem, he would have to eliminate the source, or the entire body would go from hot to lukewarm. Conrad Rocks is supported by people just like you. If these podcasts touch your life, please prayerfully consider giving an offering. You can do so very simply by going to conradrocks.net. And in the sidebar, there's a PayPal button. You can use your MasterCard, PayPal, and help out conradrocks.net. Help me spread the word. Also, if you're not into PayPal, there's an Amazon wish list, things that I can use for the ministry. You buy it, it ships directly to me. Things like, you know, guitar strings, stuff like that. We appreciate you here at ConradRocks.net. Now, obviously, I'm going to read a little bit about Revelation 3, the Laodicean church. Now, I don't have internet, so I can't verify what I'm about to say, but you guys know that I put a, I put away a lot of books. <laughs> um, and I read somewhere that the Laodicean church, Jesus was actually referring to a, a couple of ponds or a couple of springs. Uh, apparently there was a hot spring that was used for certain purposes. You know how we take a hot bath and it loosens our muscles. And we just came from Lampasas where they had cold springs. And these cold springs had some sulfur. It had a pungent odor. I find that very interesting that we're talking about this uh, odor. Uh, and comparing it to lukewarm water. But these springs also had healing properties. So basically when Jesus talks about parables and so forth, he uses things in nature so that people can, it's a mnemonic memory trick, so that people can remember and ponder on these revelations later. They can ponder on the precepts. Now in Revelation three, thirteen through 21, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says, unto the churches. Now, today, in today's world, the Spirit is highly being ignored. Tradition is seeping in, and people are basically choosing religion in a big way. I mean, if, like, when you go to church today, you know what? Count how many people you actually have a relationship with. Jesus says they will know you're our disciples by the love we have one for another. Now, when you go to church today in some of these huge buildings with these huge high steeples, you go in, you might get a program, you say hi, you sit down, there's a big show, you get some good kind of a teaching maybe, you know, something might tickle yours a little bit or it might be in depth, who knows. But then you walk back out and you never really had a meaning relationship with anybody there. Verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, I know thy works. Now notice he says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. Works show the heart. The heart shows what we believe in our heart. I mean, the, the, our works show what we believe in our heart. We will act upon the very thing that we believe. And I want to tell you something. You really don't know what you believe until you go through the fire. When your house is on fire, You'll go, oh my gosh, what's the most important thing to me? And you will run and get that most important thing out. At that moment, when you're going through the tribulation, 
right? When you're going through the fire, you learn a lot about yourself. And God searches the reins in the hearts. And Romans 6.16 says, we are the servants of who we actually obey. Okay, Jesus is appraising fruit here. And our fruit, you know, James says, you know, show me your faith. I'll show you my works, which shows you my faith. Faith without works is dead. You know, don't just say be warm and be filled. Give the dude a jacket and give him some food. That shows you what you really believe. Now, I want to share something interesting with you here. This lukewarmness, the lukewarm people. Remember how there's a source, a source of leaven leavens the entire lump. There will be a hot church and there will be a lukewarm group of people. And they're surrounded by sold out peeps that go out and witness and, and uh, do stuff for God. They're bearing fruit. They're bearing the fruits of the Spirit. And it gives them a false sense of assurance. Because if we read in Luke 13, now I'm, I'm not saying this is the rule, but it's possible. Jesus is talking about entering into the straight gate. For many, I say, well, you will seek to enter in and shall not be able, Luke 13, 24. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, there's a time. Okay, there's a time. And you begin to stand without and knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Now notice these people call him Lord. And he shall answer and say unto you, I don't, I don't know when you, whence you are. Then you'll begin to say, we've eaten and drunk in thy presence. They knew that God was there. God was showing up at their church. And thou has taught in our streets, Luke 13, 26. They know Jesus is there. But he'll say, I, I'll tell you, I know not whence you are. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. So we don't want to find ourselves in that condition. Now, um, the next point in Luke, verse 16 so then thou, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of thy mouth. Now notice that lukewarm can come from being hot at one time and being introduced to lukewarm water like my bath, or it can come from being cold and some hot being introduced to it. It's, it's, it's changed. It's changed. And he's talking to the church here. That's the important thing I want you to understand. Is here in Revelations, he's talking to the church. And listen to what the church, the Laodicean church, says. And listen to what our churches today say. In verse 17, Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I see a lot of things, are they're capitalizing on something in Job, um, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall come to pass. And that's spoken by El Eliphad the Timonite, I believe. Let me check to make sure here. It is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. Yeah, it's Eliphaz the Timonite. I kind of got a little bit of that messed up, though. But he says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established. This is something that's really uh, being pushed around in the churches today. Notice that it's Eliphaz the Timonite that says it. Uh, God later rebukes Eliphaz, saying, "What you said is wrong." However, uh, if we don't read the Psalm of the Word of God, you know we're going to find ourselves in these traps and doing what's called Bible chopping. Even the devil in Matthew four and Luke four quoted the Bible to get Jesus to kill himself. Right. So we need to have the correct application, which can only come from the Spirit of God. And if we do decree a thing via the Spirit of God, you know, um, then it's decreed from, from God. You just don't go around talking and calling those things that be not as though they were. God does that. It says even God does that. So that's something that's happening in the churches now. They're just taking scriptures like this. They're Bible chopping, taking them out of context, just naming and claiming it and turning into, turning, you know, scripture into witchcraft, basically. And they're saying, you know, they're just speaking these things forth. And Jesus said, you know, these things that you say, because thou sayest, I'm rich, and increase with goods. Like, I like myself. I like myself. You know, every day in every way I'm getting better and better. <laughs> that type of thing. Anyway, so uh, that's what a lot of people are doing in the church. You know, they read The Secret and all that. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is just getting out of control. Now, this... He says, Knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable 
and poor and blind and naked. So here we have a church that's saying they're rich and increased with goods. And hey, they may be according to the world's standards. But Jesus, looking from the spiritual perspective, says they don't know the spiritual things. They don't know that they're wretched. They don't know that they're miserable. They don't know that they're poor. They don't know that they're blind. And they don't know that they're naked. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you're none of His. You're not going to know these things. We need to have a relationship with the Spirit of God. So then he moves on to this Revelation um, 3.18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. So let's think a little bit here. Jesus counsels us to buy gold tried in the fire. Now we know that Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit and the fire. Our God is a consuming fire. You know, He's a fire, the burning bush. He burns away the chaff. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of this has this fire has to do with tribulation. Like I said, we must through much tribulation enter the kingdom of God. That's what the Bible says. Now, if we observe people in the Bible, like Joseph, Daniel, Paul, Joseph, let's see, Jeremiah, I'm just thinking to myself right here. A lot of people move from the calling part of their life into the commissioning part of their life. And that call, like Joseph, you know, he was kind of, may, may have been a snot nosed kid. He shouldn't have blabbed out his dreams. So Joseph in Genesis in the 30s around there, he was, you know, he went from a kid, which he was a youth, and, you know, he blabbed things. He blabbed some dreams, but his character was forged through the fire of tribulation, and he held on to that faith, the word of God that was given to him through two dreams at least in the old, you know, before he became Pharaoh's right hand man. So he had bought the fire and he had maintained his integrity. So he went from call to commission because of the fire. That's one of the things that we need to keep in mind. Revelation 3.19 as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. Now, this is not taught today. Today, there's books that say, love your life, you know. Um, they love their lives not unto the death. That's the thing that the Spirit totally hit me over the head when I saw that book. Now, if you're not being chastened, let's, let's analyze this. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Yeah, there's the big sins, the Revelation 21.8 sins, and the, the, you know, the, the ones that are mentioned. But one of the things that I've noticed in my walk with Christ is that there's a never-ending walk of repentance. And let me tell you some an interesting caveat about repentance. This is very interesting, and you should take note, because he who is faithful in little will be given much more. You know, if you've been faithful in your two talents, he'll give you two more talents. He who is faithful in a little of his masters, he will be given more of his own, right? So when we repent, it's not just, it's not just to stop sinning, you know, and, oh, God's going to be happy about it, but... Guess what? On the other side of our report, repentance, if we if we manage what the master has given us to steward, there is going to be more given to us on the back end. I'm just telling you that. That's what I've learned. And if you're not being rebuked and you're not being chastened, I'm going to ask you, are you really in fellowship with the Spirit of God? Now, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Jesus is saying, if you let him in to your, to your heart, 
He'll come in, and he will sup over these doctrines with you. It's an amazing thing. Then in verse 21, To him that overcometh I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Well, after all this, I want to count you to consider your bath. <laughs> Every time you take a bath, think about this teaching today, about how, you know, the hot water, It's you don't want to stick your toe in. Wow, I can't just dive into that. You know, but after you stay there a while, you get into a hot church, a church that's on fire for God. It's contagious. Just like that lukewarm water from the source can come in and drag a church down, Paul had to eliminate that source, right? Keep that water hot. Keep our works hot. And the works that are hot are basically a, a, a symbol or a, a fruit of our on-fire passion for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank each and every one of you for listening to this podcast. Thank you for being in my life. And hopefully I can get this uploaded so you can hear it tomorrow. <laughs> God bless you. Till we meet again, dig deeper. Go higher. Go higher.